Good afternoon, members. Good afternoon, any members of the public. And I would like to welcome, on behalf of the council, members from our local government association peer challenge team who have uh, come to see some of our proceedings this afternoon. I understand they're all councillors and members of council themselves, so I think they've gone above and beyond by coming to sit through yet <laughs> part of yet another council meeting. I hope you find it um, as enjoyable, if not more, than your own council meetings. <laughs> it's, it's good to have you with us. Um, oh. Sorry, yes, Karen. Sorry. Yes, carry on. Thank you, Chair. Just to say that, um, depending on how the agenda goes, I have another meeting later, so I may have to just leave a bit earlier. So that's my my apologies before I leave. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Hopwood. Thank you. Right. Um, while we are not expecting one, in case there is a fire alarm, please, uh, if that does go off, exit through the doors behind you, make your way down the steps and to the far end of the car park. Um, and please, can you remember to turn off your mobile phones or put them to silent? Thank you very much. Uh, first item on the agenda is apologies for absence. Thank you, Chair. Good afternoon, members. We've got an apology from Councillor Munoz for this afternoon's meeting. Thank you. Thank you, Mr White. Uh, we have one set of minutes to approve, which is the meeting of the 15th of February, full council, 15th of February 2024. I wasn't here for that, so would someone like to move, I'll move, we, that. I'll move that? Moved by Councillor Taylor. Do we need a seconder? Do we need a seconder? Uh, oh. Okay, all, all in favour? Thank you very much. Thank you, members. That's clearly carried for the minutes. Thank you. Urgent business. There are no items of urgent business. It, um, there will be a, a need to divide the agenda. Uh, we shall do it so that it's the last item of business uh, of the day. Uh, so if there are members of the public and uh, others mm. here at that stage, I, they will be invited to leave the meeting. Uh, Item four, declarations of interest. I invite members to declare any disclosable pecuniary interests, other registrable interests, and non-registrable interests. Thank you. Wait a minute. <laughs> Including the nature and extent of such interests uh, for any items coming up this afternoon. Council? Uh, yes. Yes, thank you, Guy. I'd like to declare an, a, uh, a personal interest or a non-registrable interest on agenda item seven, which is the proposed devolution deal. Um, as a county councillor, I will be having a, be, a, be voting on it at the county council uh, and don't think it's appropriate that I should vote on it here. So I'll be abstaining um, in, in that particular, uh, on, on that particular item. Uh, however, I will reserve my right to speak but not vote on it or abstain. Chairman, I will I will be doing exactly the same for exactly the same reasons, but I didn't. Thank you. Those are noted, Mr. White. I have to obviously do the same. Thank you. And Councillor Hodgson. I won't be doing the same. I shall be speaking out as a, as a district councillor this afternoon. OK. Thank you. Another one? Sorry, Councillor O'Callaghan. No, mine's slightly different, thank you. Um, I Just to say I'm a member of Southampton. The Southampton Society, so just to say I'm a member of them. <coughs> thank you for that. Um, public question time. Uh, no public questions have been received in accordance with the procedure rules. We move on to item seven, which is the proposed... Devon and Torbay Combined Authority and Devolution Deal. Um, thank you, Guy. Uh, bearing in mind my declaration of uh, a personal interest, I think it would be inappropriate for me to be too involved at this stage, so I would like to um, yeah, defer to, to, to John, John Birch, if that's okay. Thank you. Thank you. Councillor Birch? Yes, uh, Mr Chairman, can I propose that the recommendation that uh, I'm proposing and that has been seconded by Councillor Bonham be put on the screen. I know it is normal for um, members to ask questions before we go into the debate, 
but I just thought by uh, putting this on the screen, members may uh, see the the, uh, the be aware of the, this proposal. So I'm not certain whether you want to uh, first of all deal with questions that are on the paper, and then proceed to the debate. Uh, it, quite obviously, the meeting's in your hands. Yes, I think I'll take questions first, and I think we have some assistance. Yes, we've got Kerry Denton. Right. The county online. Okay. So we have. So could you tell the meeting that? Yes. Sorry, we've got Kerry Kerry Denton from uh, Devon County Council is here for any questions that uh, you need to direct in her direction, and clearly I'm here to uh, answer any questions that I can from a district perspective. Thank you very much. So, do members have questions? I have a question by hopping. way of thank you, Chair. I have a question by way of clarity. So, are we sorry? Are we discussing the amendment before we discuss the recommendation? Well, I think it's questions on the whole issue. I think what we'll find is that the proposed amendment is going to become. The, the resolution that's put to council as council of Brazil is not putting forward the resolution himself. <laughs> I, I, I mean, I, I don't agree, and I don't agree with Councillor. Sorry, <laughs> Councillor Hawkins. Yeah, I agree with. I agree <laughs> totally <laughs> with with you, uh, Councillor Hodgson, that um, we he. <laughs> When we represent the if we are district councillors and county councillors, when we are sat in this chamber, we are here to represent the residents of our district and to do the best for South Ham. So is this a question? The question is, why are they copping out? I think the question now, the questions now are for the motion uh, uh, and the amendment that is going to be put before us. Uh, on that particular issue. I think uh, you may well wish to ask them that during the debate, but th this is questions on the issue in front of us at the moment. Chair, I'll ask a question on that then. Why are those three councillors copping out of, and I, I apologise for the words copping out, I can't think of another way to put it, of opting out, that's the one, opting out of um, discussing this amendment? I, I, this is something I've just said. I think you can ask during the debate. I don't think this is a, a question about the issue in front of us. I think you're quite entitled to ask that during the debate, and they may or may not wish to answer that. Councillor Hodgson. Thank you. The, the um, recommendation, the alternative recommendation that's sitting up there, has that been circulated around in its full, full text? Because it's one thing to read half and half. But I just has it been sent? Has it been issued out to other people at all, or is it just here before us today for everyone? I think, if Councillor Birch, would you like to highlight any differences from the original <coughs> proposal? Differences. In answer to Councillor Hodgson's question, now this is the first time that this has seen the light of day, and for that I apologise. Um, the position is this, is that this is not a, an amendment, it's an alternative recommendation. I'll be quite happy to uh, address the recommendation uh, and then uh, answer any questions arising from it, if that would make it easier. Uh, if members would find that helpful, that's, you can, we will all have an understanding of where, where we are at that point. Thank you. <coughs> so, <clears throat> thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, so, this recommendation, perhaps, um, Mr. White, we could start at number one, right at the top. Yes. Okay. Um, right. This uh, recommendation is uh, proposed as this council's response in the consultation being undertaken uh, by uh, Devon County Council and uh, Tor Bay, and <clears throat> it lists. Uh, the six concerns uh, that I uh, <clears throat> propose be uh, submitted as part of our response in the consultation. So dealing with the, the first uh, point, or the first concern, is that it says in so many words that the proposal makes local government more complex, it adds a layer of bureaucracy, and only gives two years of funding in most areas, so does not provide 
the long-term solution uh, that the uh, region needs. That's the first point. The second point is, is that the, <coughs> the, the fact is that the, <coughs> uh, the long, the, sorry, the second point is the fact that the spending plans must be signed off by central government disqualifies the plan from being a true devolution of powers. The third concern is that its remoteness and lack of democratic accountability, including voting rights for district councils, further disqualifies it from being described as, and I quote, devolution, end of quotes. The only area being de devolved is adult education, but with no input from district councils. The fourth concern is that the government's document entitled Devon and Torbay Devolution Deal, end of quotes, indicates that this is the first step in the reorganization of local government in Devon and Torbay. And uh, I could perhaps quote from uh, the government paper, item 10 on page six, which states, government recognizes that devolution is a journey, not a one-off event. This agreement is the first step in a process of further devolution. In other words, this is only the beginning. So, in my opinion, such an intention threatens the existence of district councils, the loss of effective local governance, and may establish rule by a body that is remote and out of touch. The fifth concern is the concern set out in the uh, report that's before you, the report dated the 21st of March, in respect of economic development, housing, governance, voting rights, transport and community. The sixth concern is the cost and additional layer of local government will in itself hamper any improvement in the local services it is intended to improve and may result in their decline. And at the uh, <clears throat> conclusion of the, uh, uh, s after the six concerns, is that the council, is proposed that the council calls for the process to be postponed pending the outcome of the forthcoming general election and the 2025 county council elections. Um, the reason for that is that uh, this government is effectively for all intents and purposes, on its last legs. And after all, there are county council elections very uh, uh, next, next year, and there may be substantial changes there. So that's the reason for this process being postponed pending the outcome of those. And then it concludes by saying that the uh, council, uh, <coughs> that this resolution be submitted as the council's response in the consultation being undertaken. And then there is a postscript at the end which states uh, if and when the devolution deal does proceed and then it makes reference to the Small Sites Green Investment Program. So that is the uh, recommendation uh, that, I put, that is supported by myself and is, is seconded by, uh, <coughs> is sub and is seconded by Councillor Bonham. And can I, Propose, Mr. Chairman, that are there any questions on this before we move on to the uh, the, the, the debate? <coughs> yes, yeah, so we'll <coughs> we will continue with questions. Are there any questions to Councillor Birch before we move on to the general issue? In which case, I think the next person to indicate they wish to ask a question is Councillor Dennis. Sorry, I was just, uh, thank you for um, for going through that in detail, um, Councillor Birch, but just as a, um, could I ask that in future we, if there is an amendment of this length, that we get it in advance or at least sent to us, because it's almost impossible to read it from this side of the room in this corner. That'd be really helpful. Thank you. Can I suggest that um, Mr White does have this? It might be helpful if he circulates it to all members, so they have it on their screen if they wish to see it. By email. That may be helpful. By email. By email, yes. yes, yes. That would that would help. Thank you for the suggestion. Uh, any further? No, it's, uh, we're into questions on the issue. Yeah, Councillor Hodgson. 
why, Councillor Birch, why do you think it's advantageous to kick it into the long grass rather than kill it stone dead now? Why do, why? Well, I think the point is this. I do feel that by putting this forward as concerns and bearing in mind the response from the other district councils, um, who have raised concerns, but perhaps not as strongly as this, that what I don't want to happen is that we be left out in the cold and putting it crudely when they start d doshing out the, cra the cash. So, uh, so I suppose it's... Sorry, sorry uh, Councillor Birch, I think we're getting into what will be part of the debate. I think we need questions on the actual technicalities or, or of the proposal in front of us and if there are any, any questions that our friend from County Hall can also answer. So do we have any questions on the devolution deal as set out before you? <coughs> no? Well, th thank you very much. Um, Kerry Denton for joining us. Uh, it looks like you've got an easy ride this afternoon. But uh, yeah, don't go away because there may be something that uh, will come up. So, is there a uh, councillor? Yeah. Brazil. Thank, thank, thank you. If I could just take this opportunity to answer Nikki's point about why are we, um, whatever it was, <laughs> copping out, copping out. Can I just say that, just, just for an example, I mean, it's, the, it's it, you know, I understand what you're saying. But the, the vagaries of local government mean that if I was sitting on a parish council and a planning application came before me at that parish council and I voted for or against that planning application, that would preclude me from being involved in the decision at a later stage because I've already prejudiced my position on it. And as such, um, you know, it may be a moot point, but I'm going to, I will, I will definitely be involved in this debate, but I just don't want to vote on it because I will choose, I will... I will take, you know, I will have the opportunity to debate at a county council. So, so that that that's my position that I've taken, and that's why. So, I'm, you know, I hope you don't think I'm copping out because I will, you know, I'll have a lot to say unless it's been said already. Obviously, I don't want to repeat what people say um, during the debate. Thank you. Councillor Thomas Cormier. Yeah, thank you, Chairman. And, and again, to Councillor Hotwood, I would remind Councillor Hotwood of the example that we had in this chamber, where my predecessor in this seat voted in another place for an investment zone. And then when he was reminded of that fact in this meeting of the full council, the monitoring office had to ask him to leave the room because he had fettered his discretion by voting in another place on the same issue. Councillor Brazil and I simply do not want to be put in that position. Councillor Hawkins feels the same way and I don't blame him. Councillor Hopwood. Thank you both for your explanation. And I, do you know what, how much longer are we gonna go backwards for? We're like 18 months, 12 months into a new council. Let's keep looking forward as our, um, as the leader of the council tells us. I think my, my, um, di my disappointment is that, Councillor Brazil, you are leader, and Councillor Thomas, you're deputy leader of South Ham's District Council, and your first point should be to represent the District Council. And actually, if you read the recommendations, even the um, new suite of recommendations we've got, there's actually nothing in there that says we will support it or not support it. So there's no reason that you cannot you cannot vote on this recommendation. And I say this to Councillor um, Hawkins. Hawkins as well. <laughs> <laughs> I have explained to you all today my position. Thanks very much. Um, so and I can laugh about it, but so. I just say, you know, there's nothing in here where you're making a decision on whether to support or not devolution. And on that premise, I would ask that you vote vote with the recommendations, all um, three of you. I'm sure, I'm sure the members will make up their own minds. Councillor Hodgson. We have a monitoring officer in the room and it strikes me that maybe a little a word of advice might be helpful. My view is that if I make sure that I... I'm clear that anything I say is relates to the district council and not to the county council. Then I haven't pre I haven't predetermined my position at the county. Is that correct? To go back a step, the um, thank you, Chairman. Um, 
the, our, our code of conduct does say that members who hold dual hatted need to um, declare a personal interest that they are members of both of those authorities. And I would agree with Councillor Brazil that you have to be careful of what you say at each of those meetings, that you don't predetermine a decision. So how you interpret whether you are making a decision or not, that is up to you. But my advice is to tread very carefully um, about that. And it obviously it's up to each individual member to make that decision on their own as to whether they want to take part or not. So it's just a personal decision at that level. So, um, Thank you, Mrs. Byrne. That's, that's helpful. I think we'll move on to the debate now, please. Um, Councillor Birch, do you wish to introduce the debate? Yeah, well, I've, I have introduced, so I, I, I'll keep this short. Can I just deal with the point, we're not being asked in a consultation as a district council to make a decision. We're being asked, we're being consulted, and we're responding to the con consultation. We're not being asked today to decide whether we're in or out. It's whether it's our response to the, con to the consultation, in the consultation. I'll just make that point. In, uh, introduce, in going through the, uh, the, the recommendation, I did put to one side my, uh, my strong feelings about uh, this, and perhaps I could just bring them out in the, the debate. It, to me, uh, these proposals feel more like a uh, power grab rather than devolution. Uh, why is this additional tier of local government being promoted as devolution? when this is just not the case. It is merely a preamble, in my opinion, to the abolition of true local government in Devon. So who's going to pay for this additional tier of government? There's no mention of the dreadful financial state of the Devon County Council and Tor Bay Council. Both will continue to operate with massive debts. Their futures look grim. That doesn't bode well for this proposed additional tier of local government. Furthermore, who will pay for all this uh, added bureaucracy and additional layer of government? No doubt it will be the council taxpayers. I think we're being very polite and uh, diplomatic in our response, and I uh, support the recommendations I put forward, quite obviously. Thank you, Councillor Birch. Councillor Bonham, do you wish to speak to the motion now or later? into the open debate. Would anyone like to speak? Councillor O'Callaghan. Um, thank you. I've got a, a couple of points. Um, just, just firstly, um, I would like to um, express uh, some disappointment. I had a, a constituent email me um, this morning, and uh, um, who's also a member of the Southampton Society, who was disappointed that the um, Southampton Society uh, chairman wasn't able to ask a public question today. I believe he did come in a bit late, but there is some flexibility on um, uh, public questions actually happening a bit late under certain circumstances. But um, it seems to me that perhaps we should be more flexible in, in, our, in the rules that we have around this. Um, because part of this, part of this whole thing is that there hasn't been a lot of public consultation. Uh, it's been short. Um, most people you speak to don't know anything about it um, and in fact the chairman of the Southampton Society asked the chairman of uh, the leader of the county council uh, some questions and was told to go to one of the public meetings and um, there weren't any um, and he was also told he'd get a, a list of answers and he didn't get one um, so there isn't a lot of information about the Southampton Society um, without picking up too much is is a group of uh, dedicated volunteers who actually do try to get information about things like this out in the public domain to the public um, and I think we should if we can try to be transparent and let the public speak and the you know our impetus should be to let the public speak if there's doubt rather than not let the public speak if there's doubt I mean I think we were told that the wording was over 50 words or something um, not very much over 50 words the question that was going to be raised and also something about it wasn't on the agenda because it was to do with Devon County Council, but it, it just didn't seem to make, you know, it didn't seem to be sensible to me anyway. I'm sure there's logic for it, but um, I, I would just like to express my disappointment about that. Um, and the constituent did ask me about that. So, um, and just more widely on on, on the motion, I... I, I... You're, you're nearing your three minutes. 
Oh, sorry. Oh, right. Well, I, I, yes, I am. Um, gosh, just, um, I can't. I've gone blank now. Um, yes, I'd just like to say, well, I, I, I'm worried about the democratic deficit that we don't have, you know, that Devon County Council has three votes, um, Torbay has three. Between the eight district councils, we only have two, and they're non-constituent. I'm very worried that the government rejected the House of Lords Amendment, which would have allowed district councils to be constituent members with full voting rights. Now, why would it do that? It does worry you. I'm pleased about the housing element that we have in there. It's Councillor Hancock who did suggest this. Uh, very good that the, the Small Sites Green Investment Programme, that's a very constructive suggestion, I think, that it should go to community-led housing <coughs> developments where we struggle to get funding. So if and when this does happen, as it says there, then this is a constructive and practical element that we can put. But I do have the concerns about the extra layer of bureaucracy um, uh, that, that I think that this is proposing. So I do support the postponement. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor. Does anybody else wish to speak? Yes. Councillor Allen. Thank you. Yes, I'd just like to raise the point that um, an awful lot of town councils across the devolution area are also expressing grave concerns and worries. And I know that they've been writing um, letters rate, um, sort of highlighting their concerns, obviously, to the um, devolution uh, consultation. But I'd like to bring it here as well, because we represent the town councils as well, and they're extremely worried. Thank you. Councillor Hotwood. Thank you, Chairman. Just um, a few observations from reading through the paper. Um, and I think the recommendations within the paper are, uh, or and the recommendations that have been proposed today are very neutral recommendations. They're neither for or against, and I think that's healthy at this moment. Um, but just a couple of things um, that I want to bring up. Um, where does the deal leave South Hams because of our close relationship with Plymouth through the joint local plan? Um, does it mean we will get nothing from housing because we are part of the Plymouth housing area? We already do relatively well with Homes England without devolution and I'm worried that this element of it will change, especially with the Plymouth urban fringe. Um, I'm also concerned that South Hams may not get a fair slice of the cake. Councillor Judy Pearce, the previous leader of this council, fought long and hard with success for second homes to pay £200 council tax from 25 26 and the income from that invested in truly local affordable housing for residents. However, through legislation, South Hams will come out with approximately 720000 and Devon County Council's share approximately £6.48 million. As a council, I believe we're having to negotiate with Devon County Council to get them to invest their windfall in local affordable housing within the South Hams. At some point, uh, I feel that we members do need an update on this situation. Another concern is that Torbay and Devon County Council get three seats each at the table, whereas the remaining eight districts have to fight over two seats. This isn't democratic. For instance, Torbay has 136,280 residents. East Devon District Council has 150,800 residents, and yet East Devon may never get a seat, although they are bigger than Torbay Council. This needs to be looked at to see if the districts can negotiate for an equal say with Devon and Torbay. At the end of the day, it will go ahead whether one agrees or doesn't. And, and I think that's what we need to bear in mind. We haven't really got a lot of say in this. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Howard. Um, you did ask about the relationship with Plymouth, which won't be part of the devolution deal. I'll just ask if our Chief Executive would like to make any comments on that. I'll happily give a view, Chairman. Thank you very much. So um, I think you raise a really important question um, in, in relation to Plymouth. And, and Plymouth have made their decision that they are, they've are they withdrawn from being part of this devolution deal, but absolutely the uh, the door is still open to them. So both the county and Torbay and indeed government have left the door open for them if they should wish to come back. So leaving that to one side um, and trying to stick to answering the question rather than giving my views and opinions, it's utterly essential that we retain a strong relationship with Plymouth City Council both in terms of the Freeport and indeed in terms of the joint local plan. So irrespective of the devolution arrangements, we will absolutely have a relationship with them. 
it's up to them to decide whether they wish to come back in at some point in the future. They may or may not. And as usual, given our geography, we'll absolutely have a relationship with Devon. We'll absolutely have a relationship with Plymouth. And, and we absolutely must do that, given the relationship of our geography. Hopefully that helps. Thank you. Thank you for that. Uh, Councillor... <coughs> Sorry, pardon me. <coughs> Councillor Hodgson. Thank you. I find this all really, um, to be frank, annoying that we keep, every time there's any money coming down towards local authorities, it seems to come with strings. And this isn't just strings, this is ropes. Because what it's trying to do is to start curtailing how, in my view, the local authorities, both at Devon level and at Set District Council, um, work. Because this is, a lot of what they're offering is kind of cuts across between both us as a housing authority, for example, and Devon as a, an education authority. And it sets things out as if it's all marvellous and new and big advantages all round. But the reality is we've got officers at district across the county and we've got, there's officers at county council as well, all doing good jobs. And they're all sitting there, you know, a lot of the time these days spent trying to find ways to find budgets, to, you know, monies to actually make their budgets and make it work. So this is really just is a way of, in my view, the government pulling the strings. We're being treated like puppets. You know, it's like if you want to, if you want some money, then you're going to have to do things that then the government can say, oh, this marvellous levelling up that we've done has actually achieved this, that and the other. And actually all it's done really is suck the money out of all of us. And now it's offering it back in dribs and drabs with these massive strings attached. And as I say, those strings to me are puppet strings. And I think for us as a district council, I think we're actually bottom of the pile on this, as has already been pointed out. You know, not only will we not have much of a say, we won't be getting much of the money. And effectively, if we want to do stuff that we're doing now quite, quite ag with agility and flexibility, far more than we've had for a long time, and I think it's really welcome what's going on with the new administration now on this, I think this would just stand in our way because suddenly we'd be offered a few carrots in a place that, you know, well, we know that we'll have to start running around after those carrots to get a bit more money. Otherwise, we're going to be seen as either not playing the game or that we just, you know, we perhaps don't need it or want it. And I just I just find the whole thing that's just muddling up local authority, messing it up in a way that is totally unnecessary. And I, I appreciate what um, Councillor Birch is a trait you know, it's trying to do here with this. And there's a lot of what's there. I actually agree with the points. But the point about, like, let's, you know, wait until after the next election, I can't see there's any advantage to that because I think all it's going to do is give this, up, you know, give public money that's being obviously spent at the moment behind the scenes to make this happen as far as it has. It's just going to be wasted further. And it's wasting our officers' time. It's waste, you know. And the district council, I can't see that we've got any big advantage. And I, my, my sort of proposal would actually be to amend your recommendation that we um, say, you know, words to the effect of, we say no now. Do you wish to move an amendment? Um, not for a minute, because I'll actually think about the wording, so maybe other people maybe want to speak on this. Thank you. Councillor Long. Thank you, Chairman. Um, I, very often we see the House of Lords being defenders of local democracy nowadays, and... Um, it was interesting that the government rejected the House of Lords amendment, which would have given district councils a seat on this um, combined authority. Whether one likes it or not, at least it would have um, reinforced local democracy in something like this. And I think it sums up the government's approach to devolution. It doesn't like things that are working. And in a lot of cases, a council like this is working. Um, the movement of funding could be done without the creation of a combined authority quite easily. Wouldn't be creating another tier of bureaucracy. And I think comments have been made quite well by Councillor Hopwood and um, Councillor Hodgson in the fact that we will be losing money to bureaucracy. It should be coming down directly. It could be done. There's good work being done. I know that Devon County has its uh, financial problems, but there's good work being done in the county. There's good work being done in district councils. There's good cooperation between district councils and Devon. And the government should have recognised that and just passed the money down directly. And I think, you know, we don't need another level of bureaucracy. I welcome the recommendations, but I have a gut feeling like... Um, Councillor Hodgson, that we should be saying no to send a clear signal to the government, whether they like it or not. And I know there is a comment that we could be hamstrung, the government could be petty. 
and decide that you know money doesn't come down, that we're not involved. I think we're big enough to work our way through, but I think we need to send a clear signal that there is a democracy working here and another layer of bureaucracy, which it will be because it's going to cost money which could have been spent elsewhere, doesn't need to happen. Thank you, Chairman. Thank you, Councillor, Councillor Oren. Uh, thank you very much, Chairman. Um, I'd like to speak in support of this alternative recommendation. I think it is the right thing to do. It has been mentioned already that it's like kicking it into the long grass. I would like to say, gently, that actually I feel it's the other way round. That I'm concerned that if the County Council and the Government are seeing the writing on the wall, they are going to try and beguile us to push this forward as quickly <coughs> as possible. So I would say that this recommendation actually gives us that opportunity to say, slow down. You know, there's going to be a, a big change in the political landscape in the next year or so, and we all need to be mindful of that. Um, Plymouth City Council are currently not a part of this situation, and I think it might be worth noting that if there is a change of political landscape and there is a different party in charge come the end of the year, that Plymouth may come with us and it gives us an opportunity to be able to talk to them and to increase our relationship with them in terms of joint local plan and other things that are going on. Uh, and finally, Chairman, if I may, I'll just say very gently to county councillors that as far as I know, all of you are representatives of your county patch. That includes your district patch. So the way I see it is that where is your vote going to have the most impact? And if you're voting on this at county council, by extension, you're voting for your district patch. So regardless whether you're Liberal, Conservative or Green, I would encourage you to abstain on this position so that you could have the better, um, a better opportunity to vote at a county level where your vote is going to have more impact and a more meaningful uh, version. Thank you, Chairman. Thank you. Uh, Councillor Thomas. Thank you, uh, Chairman. Um, I'm going to look at the monitoring officer as I say this and say that I am predisposed <laughs> to like what Councillor Hopwood said, ah. but I am not predetermined. <laughs> Councillor Hopwood, what I would also say is I can't, I can't vote for or against this because it's asking for a postponement and I don't want to do that. And I'm taking what Councillor Orms just said and I'm taking that seriously. Um, and all I would add, equally gently, Councillor Hotwood, and you need to listen to this because it's important, we're not allowed to talk about Councillor Pierce because we don't look back, remember. We only look forward. <laughs>
getting access to the basic IT skills help that they need for them to be able to get access to things like online banking. That currently, the way that the adult education budget is framed in Westminster does not allow them to do. Because you don't get a qualification for being able to turn on a computer. So I'm positive that this part, the adult education budget is being devolved to the proposed CCA. I share your concerns about the democracy. I think it is iniquitous that Devon and Torbay have equal voting, given the differences in population. I think the devolution that is that is proposed here is a small step. It's a tiny step. It's a teeny tiny step. But this is the most centralized state of all advanced economies. We need to help them when they take a little tiny step. We need to encourage the Treasury when they make little brave steps to give power to local authorities to do more to, for the benefit of local residents. And we need to encourage them along that road. We need to take this. We need to show the difference that can be made for local residents. And then we need to ask for more. And we need to ask for more again. And we need to keep going until we've got a, a genuine devolution. But we'll get it through taking steps, not through a sort of great revolution into the promised lands, which which elements of the debate seem to seem to think is is possible. Thank you, Councillor Hamlet. Councillor Brazil. Then I'll, then I'll come back. Then I'll come back for the amendment. Yeah, thank you. Uh, can I just say that I agree with much of what has been said, uh, and but I will stick to the thing that I will be abstaining in the vote because I believe that um, I will have the opportunity at the County Council. As, as Chris has said, we are just a consultee here. At County, we actually have a, we can veto it. If the County votes against it, it won't go ahead, full stop. If we vote against it, that's not the case. We will just be a lone voice in Devon saying we don't like it and we just stop it. And, you know, I might have some sympathy and let's see what I do at County Council. You, you can watch it on YouTube if you want. <laughs> those, uh, <laughs> I'll send you a copy of the link where I'm speaking, but but no, I, I, and I think I, I I think we we need to be we need to be like you know we need to be clever here. Is that what we don't want to do is to throw away our negotiating position within the whole devolution debate, and if we make ourselves that we are transiently opposed or for it as a district when it's when it's not up to us to decide whether it goes ahead or not because we're just being consulted on it and what we think i think that that would be a mistake uh, as a council whether one believes this is a rubbish deal or not i just don't think we should jeopardize our negotiating position um and nikki can i say i'm delighted that you raised the whole thing about plymouth because absolutely Plymouth are integral to the South Hands with our joint local plan, our free port, uh, whatever one thinks about that. These are issues that are massively important to South Hands and how we deal with Plymouth. Uh, and so I'm very comfortable for, for, for this as, as I see it. You know, I won't vote on it. I'll abstain. But I think it is a, it's a mature position for this council to take. It's expressed its views and it doesn't agree with it. But it hasn't done anything that's sort of like we've thrown our toys out of the pram and stormed off. We need to be involved in discussions about devolution. If you don't believe in devolution, the, fair play. I'd, I'd, be, I'd be amazed if any of the councillors here don't believe in devolution. We need devolution. As David said, this may be the first tiny step towards devolution, which we want to make sure that we influence to get the kind of devolution that we want. So um, I'll leave it there. Thank you, Chairman. Thank you, Councillor Brazil. Councillor Hodgson, you wish to move an amendment? Um, I've already sent it to Daryl. Did you pick it up, Daryl? Yeah. Just a second, got it now. Thank you. So it's um, where after item eight, where it says the council, it's just that line, and that's where it finished. That's where the um, 
the recommendation finishes. No, sorry, actually, you can leave the bit underneath as well. That's fine. Do you want me to read it out then? Or are you going to put it out? No, put it out there. Okay. So the, the amendment I'm proposing is that this council calls for the process to be abandoned and not waste further public money on a deal that is not devolution. Rather, the 16 million allocated to be dispersed to the various local authority departments already in place. Thank you. Do you have a second there? I think this is a, it negates the original um, proposal that's put on the table by Councillor Birch, and the correct way to proceed would be to debate and vote on Councillor Birch's proposal, which is the amendment on the, uh, the proposal on the table, and then if you don't like that, to vote against it, and then if it falls, you can propose this alternative as an alternative amendment proposal. Sorry. Thank you, Mrs. Bowen. That's clear. So if you want to that's a good explanation. Thank you for that. Um, does anybody else wish to speak before we conclude the debate? We'll come, I'll come back to the second room proposer, in which case I'll come to Councillor Bonham first as the second, and Councillor Birch. So we've moved to the vote, moved to the vote on this uh, on this proposal that's now before us. All in favour, members, please show. That's 24 in favour of the proposal. Thank you, Chair. Those against, please show. With no votes against, and any abstentions, please. Which makes six. Thank you, Chair. Thank you. That motion is carried. Uh, we move on to the next business. Item eight, which is the capital strategy, the treasury management strategy, and the investment strategy for the coming year. Now, are you going to introduce this, Councillor Bonner, or is Councillor Brazil? Um, I'll, I'll defer to, to Lee, actually, because he's just chaired the ONS meeting when this was discussed. So, a and I mean, um, Audit and Governance Committee. So I'll, I'll defer to Lee, if that's okay. I'll just say that members, I hope a, a number of members were able to watch the presentation on Monday morning, which I thought was very good. and. Uh, the usual excellent information from my finance team, and I found that very helpful. So thank you for Mrs. Buckle and the team for, for, for doing that. It, it did help um, bring out some salient points. Thank you. Yes, thank you very much, Chair, and thank you, Councillor Brazil, um, and thank you, officers, for putting uh, together three very good documents. Uh, they are statutory requirements for us to submit these three strategies, and. Uh, I think there's a lot of detailed information in them on how this council operates and uh, the way it, it treats these three quite important areas. And there's also some key figures that indicate and how we're doing and uh, what our position is on capital investment and treasury strategy. Um, in terms of the first point, how we're working, I think it's fair to say from the documents and the briefing that the council is working in a very prudent and cautious way and having a um, high regard for taking care of public money. Um, just as an example of that, the uh, investment strategy, uh, the priorities are first the security of our, our investment, uh, secondly, the liquidity and how we've got access to our money, and only thirdly, as third priority, the return on investment. So we're being very cautious, but despite that cautiousness, we're actually getting a very high rate of return, 5.4% over the past period, which I think is actually higher than quite a number of nearby councils in a similar position. So uh, in fact, we're being very cautious, but also very effective. And that uh, I'm sure you can see is a very good place to be. The, the regulatory guidance says that we've got to take note of three particular areas in these, uh, in the, in these reports. So firstly, um, 
we've got to think about affordability in our investment and our capital strategy and so on. Um, we've got to make sure that we are prudent and that we're sustainable. And I think, again, on all of those three measures, we're doing a good job. Just on affordability, um, the income from our investments is actually higher than the cost of our loans. That's a great place to be. Um, indeed, maybe we should be borrowing more. I'm not sure we're allowed to, but why not? Um, but, you know, that's a good place to be. Uh, in terms of prudence, our debt is around 40 million. Our assets are around 38 million. That's a very nice ratio to have. Uh, in terms of sustainability, um, the interest, as I've already mentioned, that we're paying, which is around 2.5%, is roughly half of the interest rate that we get from our investments, approximately 5%. So, you know, that's not a bad position overall to be in. Uh, I think you'll you'll see, and we are way below our spending limit of seventy five million in loans. Our debt roughly fourteen million. So overall, I hope these uh, show we're in a great state, and I hope we can approve the strategies uh, as recommended. Thank you. First of all, do we have any questions? No questions. Does anybody wish to speak? You, you're moving it then, Councillor Bonham? Yes, I'm uh, moving it. we have it. a seconder? Councillor Birch? Uh, in which case, we'll put it to the vote. All in favour, please show. <laughs> That's 28 in favour. Thank you, Jeff. Any yes. <laughs> so many people voting for it to be to be back. <laughs> Sorry, we've had the votes for votes against. First of all, then against Jeff. Um, abstentions, please. That's all right. We're just confirming that. Two abstentions. Thank you, Jeff. Well, there was such an overwhelming vote that it uh, not be sideways. <laughs> yeah. Is it possible to speak now? Thank you. Yeah, I did actually have my hand up to speak. And no, you, sorry. You don't seem to see this corner. I don't know quite why, but <laughs> I'll get sorry. a red flag or something. Um, I just wanted to raise something that I raised on Monday, which I thought was quite important, and I thank Lisa for sending forward some information, which is, and thank you, Lisa. I would actually appreciate if you did circulate to everybody else. That was you. Used, very useful but I just think we should be really mindful of where our money is invested and while we vote we, we sort of look at how our money goes into banks it's what do then they do with the money and bearing in mind we're spending a lot of money and a lot of our time and consideration and you know I'm really pleased real concern about what's happening without you know the climate emergency and biodiversity emergency but I do think you know we need to be careful we're not spending money on things that undermine that and that is very much a picture when you actually start looking at bigger investments and as I explained to those who were there on Monday, I've actually spent quite a lot of time going to the investment and pension fund committees that are held quarterly at Devon County Council. And, um, you know, it's, it's by looking at that, they can tend to note shell reports. And it's like when, when they're one of the big in, the people they're investing in, thinking for some reason it's green. But when you look at the report, you see quite a different picture emerge. And I do think it's important that we actually kind of it's one better expression that as councillors we're not lazy on this because if we look carefully I think there's things that we could invest in which would actually be really positive beneficial things renewable energy for example is very under invested in and it's a possibility that we could actually start supporting our own climate emergency agenda by investing in those very things particularly some of the more regional interesting projects that would be really good for our local economy too so I think it's something that we kind of I think a lot a lot of us I'm no economic whiz by any stretch of the imagination but there's a kind of an instinctive thing that if money isn't being watched where it goes, it can actually undermine what you're trying to do. And we get a lot of greenwash that a lot of the banks, I think, kind of get pick up to. And particularly Lloyds, for example. I know a lot of the um, people who are environmental activists have been very concerned about Lloyds investment strategies. So I think it's something that we need to, I'm just you know, flagging it really, that I'd like us to maybe have a bit of a conversation at some point about where the money actually ends up. I know that when um, the Environment Agency joined with um, the portfolio. Yeah, I, think, I think you've made the point there, Councillor. Oh, well, I was just, if I just make one little tiny point, is the Environment Agency joined with Devon County Council on the investments for their pension funds. 
and it instantly changed the portfolios because people from the environment agency were looking very carefully and they said that you're making unwise investments and they did change the portfolios so maybe we could do the same thank you there's some interesting points i'm sure the leader will take some of those on board and but perhaps the executive and maybe over you in scrutiny will be, be taking some interest in what you've said thank you Right, we move on to item nine, the annual review of the health and safety policy statement. Uh, personally, I read every word of it last year, and I'm delighted to, when I read the introduction to see that it hasn't changed this year. <laughs> um, yes. Um, it's something we have to do every year, and it obviously it's, it's, it's at the heart of, uh, of what we do as an organisation, looking after the health and safety of our members and our, our staff. Um, uh, I think, Councillor Brazil, you're going to introduce this. Right, yeah, I mean, I will. I, I thought, um, as we're adopting it, or indeed endorsing it, that uh, maybe our lead on um, licensing might want to say something about it. No, don't worry. <laughs> no, don't worry. No, uh, look, it's, it's exactly the same as it was last year. I hope you can all support it. Thank you to Ian and his team for putting in, in, in the hard work. It's a crucial piece of work that we have to do uh, and, and we have to review it annually. But I think the fact that nothing's changed is probably a good sign. So I hope that you can support it. Thank you. And I'm happy to uh, propose a recommendation. Thank you. Council will be proposed. We have a seconder, Councillor Thomas. Uh, does anybody have any questions? Oh, Councillor Dennis. Thank you. And uh, I, I did, in fact, read every word of it. <laughs> and I have sent some questions since then to Mr. Luscombe. Um, the, uh, uh, referring to 4.6, which is about employees and elected members, and uh, elected members should report accidents, instances, near misses to their line manager, etc. I'm not entirely clear I know who that is, so it's a request really that actually from an elected member's point of view and perhaps a newer elected member's that perhaps we could have a, some information on that. And then my second point was the, the following one, 4.7 key staff, and it lists the head of environmental health, which I know, head of maritime, head of human resources, etc. I didn't actually know who the head of human resources was, um, and uh, you know I wanted from the beginning really a sort of organogram of who everybody is in this organisation because that would be really helpful, particularly for the head of all these departments. So maybe not a question, but a couple of notes. No, that's a, that's a good point. Thank you, Councillor Mr. Bates. Thank you, Chairman. So uh, you raise a really good point, Councillor Dennis. So. Um, it's an incredibly important report, but I think you're quite right. It's framed really more from an employee's point of view. Of course, it does cover uh, our duty to us councillors as well. And I'm sure Mr. Luscombe will be delighted to do a briefing session for any members who want to. Um, I think actually I'd encourage all members to do that um, because there are all sorts of things that we do as an employer, all sorts of things we do within our communities which do involve us in uh, all sorts of operations. Now we're a waste service. The risk around our operations is dramatically different to what it was two years ago. So, um, Mr Luscombe, perhaps you could take that on, uh, make sure that members are, are briefed if they'd like to be and provide that information. Absolutely, Andy. Um, good afternoon, members. Um, I will be talking to the Head of Member Services, Daryl, um, to schedule in some time with you if you would like that briefing. And certainly if there are elements of health and safety relating to yourself that you're particularly <coughs> interested in or feel that we should cover in more detail, then please let me know and I'm happy to do that. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Luskin. Uh, Councillor Bond. Yeah, thank you, Chair. So I'm referencing the uh, 5.6.4. Uh, it seems that compliance is to be monitored by the um, Performance Board and reported to Audit and Governance. So I'm, I'm not sure whether we've seen that report. I don't know. I don't recall it. I'm just wondering if it will be brought to Audit and Governance at some stage. And um, maybe just in summary, you could say what kind of um, tracking we've got, if we're seeing any particular increase in any health and safety incidents over the past 12 months, just at a high level. Thank you. I'm happy to schedule in a fuller report with the audit and governance um, team or, or meeting, um, and we can go through the statistical 
returns for the past year. I'd suggest, therefore, we wait till the end of year end so that we have a neat sort of start and finish to that reporting period. And then certainly I can take you through that information. In terms of comparisons, um, it's quite difficult because obviously, um, as Chief Exec mentioned, we've taken on the waste function, which in itself is a high risk activity, which leads to more reporting of near risk misses and accidents. So it's very difficult to compare year on year because we have significantly increased the risk um, involved in what we do here as the council. Um, but I'm sure we could explore that a little bit further at the Audit and Governance Committee, if you'd like. Thank you. Thank you, Chair. Just to, um, in the hope of assisting Councillor Dennison, seeing as it hasn't come up, the uh, organisation charts are freely available on both iTrent and on Teams. Um, so, um, hope that helps. Does anybody wish to add anything to the debate on this, or do we wish to move to the vote? Um, I'm just wondering, it might be too late now, but for future versions that we should include mental health and well-being on the health and safety policies. Yes, you can do that. Councillor yeah. yes, sorry, it, it, is, it is mentioned in there, but it, it, to be fair, it is only mentioned once, I think. Um, Mr Lus Luscombe will know more than me, but... Um, it does talk about mental and physical health of employees just before point five, but it's not mentioned as a, as a sort of thread throughout. It's true. So, yes, it should be given more parity. Um, I, I think that's true. Thanks. So, so I think the point that's been raised is a really important one, and uh, we are doing some work with colleagues in, uh, in our um, HR team and with... Mr. Luscombe, one of the things we're looking at is the extent to which our policies and procedures also cover uh, councillors. So we will bring that work back. Um, we'll bring it back to you um, in some form and certainly well ahead of this time next year. So we'll make sure there's a way of that being reported back and perhaps it can be reported back as part of the reporting to audit and governance. That's probably the easiest thing to do. We can tie it up, tie it up in one place. Thank you, Chairman. Thank you, Mr. Banks. Uh, if nobody else wishes to comment, um, it's been proposed and seconded. We shall move to the vote. All those in favour, please show. That's unanimous for the recommendation. Thank you, Chair. I don't have to ask if anybody's against. <laughs> that is carried. Thank you very much. Uh, move on to item 10, which is the pay policy statement. Uh, Council of Brazil. Um, yeah, thank you, Guy. Once again, this is uh, a statutory responsibility of this council to produce this pay policy statement. Um, just briefly, can I say that um, I'm delighted to see that actually in respect of our ratios between the highest and lowest paid in this uh, authority, we're, that's actually the gap has closed only fractionally, but it has closed. And I think compared to what we see, the corporate greed that we see in the private sector, you know, this, that's a good example for this authority to be setting, uh, that we really appreciate that the idea that, 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 that the, the senior executive's pay should suddenly start disappearing out of sight from the lowest paid is, is not something that I endorse. And I'm pleased to see that this council um, is sticking to those principles. Thank you. Um, and I'll, I'll move the recommendations as they are, Chairman. Thank you, Council Brazil. Seconder, Councillor Thomas. Does anybody have any questions? Does anybody wish to speak to this? In which case, we will put it to the vote. All those in favour, please show. That's also unanimous. Thank you, Chair. Thank you very much. Uh, item 11, draft calendar of meetings for the coming year. Uh, Council of Brazil to introduce. I, I will say that I have checked against half term and at the moment <laughs> there are no clashes with half term. So I hope personally to be at all full council meetings in the coming year. <laughs> uh, 
Yeah, yeah thank you, Guy. Well, if, if you're happy, then I'm happy. Uh, so I will move the recommendations as they are. Thank you. Seconder. Um, we were, sorry, I, I, before we go into questions, I, I have a question myself, which we were canvassed on our views on start times for the main meeting. Perhaps we could have an update on that first. Thank you, Chair. You were indeed. Um, so for 31 members we canvassed, we had 20 responses. And broadly speaking, so just for the public record, there was three options presented for full council meeting start times, being 2 p.m., 4 p.m., and 7 p.m. And in summary of the 20 responses, we had 17 supportive or at least acceptive of a 2 p.m. start. 10 comments were supportive or acceptive of a 4 p.m. start and three comments were supportive or acceptive of a 7 p.m. start. Thank you, Chair. Thank you. That canvas was purely on start times for full council. Uh, council Brazil, can I ask you um, whether we will consider possible amendments to the start time for other meetings? Yeah, I, I, I think that this... I think that it's very interesting, I and mean, obviously we're all councillors here, and, and in a way we're self-selecting. We turn up at two o'clock meetings for full council, and, and what we need to be is to make sure that we're not excluding other members of our communities who might actually want to be councillors but couldn't do two o'clock meetings. So I think there is more work to be done here, uh, and uh, I think other meetings could be at different times. I think the one thing we really all should do, as or as a council we should do, is lobby government so that hybrid meetings mean that people can join on teams and vote accordingly, as, as, as during COVID. I, I don't see any reason why we couldn't be allowed to do that. There may be specific ones that know we've got to be here in person, but I think on many occasions um, it would make the life particularly of, 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 of those working full-time or with caring um, uh, uh, responsibilities, the opportunity for them to pass tests, participate more fully in the council, which has only got to be good for us. So um, I don't know if it's something that we might get the report and pass over to, I don't know, Jonathan, if it's something ONS might want to look at, yeah. um, a possible to make recommendations to full council. That, that would be good. I think that's a really good idea. Yeah, fully supported. Councillor Brazil. Thank you. Uh, Councillor Hodgson. Yeah, I just wanted to just check, and I'm assuming, I, I think it probably is there because the fact there's some um, early times on the council meetings. I'm just checking that this has been double checked against um, county council as well, because for those of us dual hatted, it just really helps. Not, so, But the fact there's some early starts, I'm assuming that's because they clash on the same day and that's fine. Right. That's, that's correct for you, Chair. The um, Of note, the budget meeting and the annual council meetings do unfortunately clash with the county council, but as to partly compensate for that. They are morning start times here at the district. Point, which is about DM um, meetings. They quite frequently clash with cabinet at county. And the DM used to, can you start huffing and puffing? Yeah. Um, they used to start at two in the afternoon. And so when they, we needed the extra time, it would start in the morning, but it wasn't every time. But now they seem to always start in the morning. And if they could be reverted back to the two, then it would, that clash wouldn't happen, if that's possible. Sorry, to just, if I, just, just answering that point. DMC has been moved to Thursdays now, Jackie, so it won't clash with cabinet. I think. I think the reason, and the reason why we did that is that for those some people who work who want to take a day off a week, so Thursday will be the council day, and and if they're on DMC, that would include. So that's why we've done it. Um, I hope it works, and I hope it makes it more, um, and particularly for you, Jackie. I mean, you know, it means that you can do both cabinet and DMC if, if you want to. Pays to read the papers first. Uh, Councillor Hancock. <laughs> um, I'd just like to note to, to, to Councillor Hodgson that every meeting I attend here clashes with my work. The only thing I would say, though, is that you are entitled, if it depends who you work for, but as far as I understand it, you are entitled to take paid time off if you're a public representative on a principal authority. Just, right, uh, I have a question from the Chief Executive. Sorry, I know I'm normally the person who should answer questions rather than ask questions, but um, this is the calendar of meetings for the year. Um, I understand the point that's been made about referring it to ONS. Can I ask whether we're accepting the council calendar for the coming year with a view to amendments next year, or whether we're um, seeking for that work to happen and then perhaps 
it happened part way through the year. It's just the complexity of trying to plan is no, really difficult. Fair point. So, uh, so I've recommended the recommendation as is, which is to recommend this year's as they are printed in this paper. Um, so, and any work that's done would be that in future um, municipal years that we'd look to change it or possibly. But I think the main thing is is to is to allow hybrid meetings. You know, that would be the biggest change, and it would make a massive difference to lots of people and open up the council to lots more people as well. So, I think that would be the way forward. So. Look, I, I'll reiterate that I propose the motion as, as it is on the order of paper. Thank you. Does anybody else wish to speak? Oh, uh, can, oh Han Councillor Hancock has spoken. Anybody else to speak? Oh, oh, Councillor Hotwood. Thank you, Chairman. Um, I do, I do, I, I'm glad that start times were looked at for full council, but members who stand for council, I think with South Hams, it's very clear that Thursdays are meeting days. So I think that for, for those who stand, you need to be prepared to, to know that a meeting's on a Thursday. And, you know, to, for me to have, a, especially a 7 p.m. start, four is bad enough. You know, we all have family. I don't have children at home, but I still count my husband as family. And as I said to someone yesterday, <laughs> he can't boil an egg. So, you know, I like I to be say, at home. We, <laughs> we all have parish councils, so I think we, we are so used to, and to be, being, especially I know the um, members that have stood for uh, my group, were all made aware that Thursday was a day where you're expected to come to council, and that was to be put off, and that's sort of continued, so um, I won't, I'm glad we're leaving it as it is for this year, and I think maybe look at it more in depth for next year, thank you. Yes, I'm just wondering whether we're going to need to introduce cookery lessons for members' partners, but <laughs> we might think about that. Councillor Thomas. Yeah, I'm sure Councillor Hopwood's husband is thrilled to know that he's still part of the family chairman. But I mean, <laughs> on, 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 on the on, on the point about groups, it's not this. Councillor Hopwood, this isn't political, though. You 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 told you may well have told your group that thir that, that thirty to council days, but. The reality is, it also means that your group will never have a full-time school teacher as a district councillor. That's what it means. No, but I, no, that's that's a fact. Because I was a full-time school teacher, I got elected to the district council, and I'm not a full-time school teacher anymore because I can't do both. Now that's fine. If we're happy as an organisation to accept the fact that there are certain jobs that will never be represented on these seats, then that's fine. But if we're not happy with that. There will have to come a point at some time when we have to look seriously about how we get around that. Now, I'm not saying we're going to change that now. The order paper is there, but it's just worth, it's worth considering. It doesn't matter how often you say, I made my group aware. The fact is, there are certain jobs that under the current setup, they will not be able to be district councillors. And I think, democratically, that is a tremendous pity. Thank you. Councillor Long. Thank you, Chairman. Um, Obviously, welcome this and welcome the move, and I'm supportive of the move of the uh, DM wow. committee to a Thursday. Um, but at this point, I'd like to, as chairman, thank all those members who do serve on DM, either as full time or coming in as substitutes, because obviously, DM, I believe, is one of the most onerous of committees on this council, being every month with site. Uh, visits one day as well and obviously all the paperwork to go through so I'd like to take this opportunity to thank all those members who do serve <laughs> either full-time or as substitutes on DM committee for the work that they put in for this committee thank you thank you Councillor Long I'm sure it's appreciated does anybody else wish to speak on this item in which case we'll move to the vote it's been proposed and seconded uh, the draft calendar of meetings for the coming year. Can I ask all those in favour to please show? <coughs> Thank you, Church. 29 in favour. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, anybody against? None against. No, no abstentions. Any abstentions? Just one abstention. One abstention. Thank you, Church. Thank you very much. That uh, calendar is approved. Uh, moving on to reports of bodies. Uh, most of them are just for noting. Um, we start with the Budget Advisory Committee of 11th of January. Councillor Long. 
Chairman, I'd like to move the uh, minutes of the Budget Advisory Committee for Thursday, 11th of January. Thank you. Thank you. That is noted. Um, overview and scrutiny of the 8th of February. Councillor Hawkins. Our Chairman, I'd like to move the minutes of the Overview and Scrutiny Committee meeting, which was held on the 8th of February 2024. That is noted. Uh, DM on the 14th of February. Councillor Long. Chairman, I'd like to move the minutes of the Development Management Committee of the 14th of February. Thank you. That is noted. Uh, special. Uh, thank you, Guy. I'll move the uh, minutes for noting from uh, of the executive on the 21st of February. No recommendations from that one. That is noted. The Council Tax Setting Committee. Uh, Council Brazil. Yeah, I will move the minutes for noting for the Council Tax Setting Committee on the 22nd of February. Thank you. That is noted. And now we move on to the executive meeting on the 7th of March and Council Brazil to present the minutes and there are formal recommendations uh, being put to the Council. Um, thank you. I will I'll, I'll, um, formally move the, the minutes for noting and then move on to uh, recommendation number one, which is the that we should be rec that the council is recommended to endorse the Devon and Cornwall and Isles of Scilly climate adaptation plan as set out in at Appendix A of the presented report. Um, and I will propose that. Yeah, I have a second for that. Thank you, Councillor Thomas. Do we have any questions? Do we have any questions on that item? Does anybody wish to speak to that item? In which case, can I ask members in favour to please show? That's 29 in favour, thank you, Chair. Any against? Any abstentions? One abstention, thank you, Chair. Thank you. Uh, next item, Council of Brazil, the Housing Benefits War Pension. Yes, a minute uh, 79 stroke 23, that the Council be recommended to adopt the Housing Benefit War Pensions Disregard Policy as set out at Appendix A of the pre presented agenda report. I don't know if, if Nikki wanted to say anything about that. Um, I'll give you the same blank look that Councillor O'Callaghan gave you. Okay. <laughs> 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 I'll take that as a no then. Um, so I'll move the recommendations as as, as showing up on the. On Second the, for that. Yes. Yeah, uh, thank you, yeah. Councillor Thomas. Uh, do we have any questions? Uh, do anybody wish to speak? In which case, we will put it to the vote. Um, I don't know if you just want to have a, a little bit more explanation about that. Well, um, you, <laughs> yeah, no, so basically what happened before is that if you got a war pension, that income was used, was calculated, when they were calculating your, um, your, your, your housing benefit. Uh, and what we've done is we've decided to disregard that. So if you get your war, war pension, that does not count against you when, if you're means testing uh, the, the um, housing benefit. I, I think it's an excellent policy. Uh, you know, the, the people, the ex-service people deserve a great deal. They're some of the most vulnerable people in our society and anything we can do to help them. And I'm proud that this council and, and, and Nikki brought forward this report. More evidence cost a living. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. No, you've, he's still in your mind, hasn't he? Anyway, so, so that's, uh, hopefully that's um, enough for you, Chair. Yes, thank you. Councillor Reed, did you wish to speak? No, right. Okay. If nobody else wishes to speak, uh, we'll put that to the vote. All those in favour, please show. That's unanimous. That's unanimous, that recommendation. Thank you, Chair. Thank you. That is carried. Uh, item three, the revenue budget monitoring. Uh, yes, I'll, I'll, I'll move the motion as set out um, on the screen there. Um, basically what it is, is that we have a cost from our various planning appeals, which I hope people, Locks Hill being probably the main one, but there are others as well. Um, the, um, uh, I forgot what it is, yeah. Um, um, the, <laughs> the Dairy Crest site, thank you. How could I forget? 
<laughs> most important. There are other appeals like that. They do cost money. We had initially thought that we'd take the funding out of the planning uh, pot, but we've decided, uh, well, we, we're recommending to you, to the full council, that you would take it out of the business rates retention earmark reserve. Um, so that's what this recommendation is about. Thank you, Chair. Do we have any questions on that? Councillor Hodgson. Thank you. Um, yeah, just in just on the reference to that one, I mean, if you're referring to the Atmos appeal, we haven't had the result on that yet. So surely the costs, I know we've incurred some costs, but can we not get it awarded against the um, applicant if if it's, um, if their dis appeal is dismissed? Uh, I, I don't think we've gone for costs on that one. No, but you're right. In fact, I, I've, I've never known this council go for costs on any appeal. And I think something I think we should change. And I believe that... Pat or Alistair aren't here, but I believe that there is an appeal in Frogmore where we are going for costs, where we feel that the that the applicant is um, well is 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 just fundamentally wrong, and they should not have taken it to appeal. We were absolutely right to refuse it, uh, and as such, we are going for costs. And I think that we should set we should we should set that as a precedent. Quite frankly, well, that's if we get them. We may not. So. If our if our view is upheld and I see no reason why we should as public authority cough up for somebody who just didn't like the answer they got the first time round. Well absolutely Jackie but I'm afraid that has there's a timing issue here and we have to you know when you see an appeal the, the appeal for costs is at the same time so we've missed that boat totally agree and we should do more of it. Okay um, yeah. anybody else have any questions or wish to speak on this? If not, we'll put that to the vote. All those in favour, please show. That's unanimous to the recommendation. Thank you, Chair. Uh, the next item, I believe, Councillor Brazil will be taken later um, as part of the, the, the debate on item 16. Yeah, so, so we'll, so we'll vote for item agenda 16. Yes, so so other than that... Um, uh, there's, there, then you've got the special executive for the 13th of March. Um, Just yeah, so happy to move the um, uh, minutes for the special executive on the 30th of March for noting. So noted. Uh, that, de that deals with all the reports of our bodies. Uh, we've received no questions on notice. We have one motion on notice, and if you just hold on for a moment now. Yeah, we've uh, agreed, or I've decided that we will take <laughs> a tea break now. We've done very well, I think. Thank you, members. I think um, we made some pertinent points, but kept them to the, to the mark. Um, we'll take a, well, let's say 15, what's the time now? It's, we'll re resume at 22 4. Okay, thank you very much.
Thank you, everybody. Uh, we'll resume the meeting. I know there's one or two members who've had to leave for various reasons. Uh, but we move on now to item 14, which is motions on notice, which we have one motion received from Councillors McKay and O'Callaghan. Uh, Councillor McKay, would like to move your motion? Uh, it has been amended since originally notified. Uh, yes, the, the, the published motion is, uh, well, the motion on the screen there is, uh, is subtly different um, from the, uh, the one that's been circulated uh, with papers uh, due to um, legal uh, issues that I don't know whether the monitoring officer may be better placed to explain than I possibly could. Yes, Mr Chairman, um, I have been um, in liaison with, with Councillor McKay because not with the, 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 the substance of the motion and its intent, but to do with the fact that the Council has to be very careful about um, ruling what can and cannot take part place on its land. It's, it's governed by a, a yield statute, so it says that we have to take into consideration the benefits of the area and, and improvements to the area in making any decisions about the use or banning of use of its land. So I was just ensuring that Councillor McKay's motion was lawful. So I haven't meddled with its intent, as it were, but I made sure that the wording doesn't get us into hot water. No, no. And Thank you. Being, being lawful is always a good thing. <laughs> um, yeah, yeah, sorry. Uh, Councillor McKay would like to introduce the debate. Okay, um, this came about due to um, uh, an incident on, uh, uh, in, in Kingsbridge, on, on the car park there, and uh, not an incident, but uh, um, uh, I have always been felt, uh, been very strongly uh, opposed to hunting, uh, and I believe um, uh, Councillor Callaghan had the similar feelings, so out of that uh, joint uh, um, objection to, to, to this, uh, we decided to put forward this motion. And um, and talking to colleagues said, I think the, there is general agreement about this. But the, I've had a lifelong uh, belief that, um, uh, uh, that you know, animal welfare is, is, is such an important thing. I was brought up on a, a chicken farm and I did abominable things to chickens uh, in, 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 in my past. And, uh, and and looking back, I'm quite ashamed of, of I didn't understand. Uh, I just regarded these things as being a, a, a source of eggs, basically. Um, and uh, I didn't uh, really have any idea about the concept of animal sentience. Uh, I've learned a lot since then um, and over the last uh, many decades. And uh, animal sentience is, is actually the key consideration here. Uh, you hear now, I mean, there was something in the news just recently about uh, an elephant that uh, was uh, was stopping on its way to doing the work that it was doing um, because uh, it lost its mother and it, and there was an, it's, and it remembered where, where um, its mother had died. Uh, it's, things like that are constantly uh, cropping up. Uh, I was involved in, in my sort of IT background with neural networks and all that sort of stuff. And it's amazing what uh, you can get out of, and this is precursor to all the artificial intelligence stuff, which is irrelevant, but it, it's just amazing what you can get out of a very small number of neurons. And the, the, there is now even studies on uh, the sentience of insects. And, uh, and you can just see it in the behavior of birds. Uh, I'm, I, it always annoys me when people say, uh, that you know that the murmuration of, of starlings is just about um, you know they're all gathering together in order to protect themselves get from, from prey. This is one explanation, uh, and it's a very behaviorist explanation. Uh, but behaviorism has, has actually sort of been overtaken by this understanding that actually they're doing it because they're having fun. They're doing it because they can do it. When you see a seagull floating on uh, on that draft, they're not doing it for any particular reason. They're doing it because they're having fun. Uh, the, when you see cows uh, that um, lose their mate, um, you know, they get separated, they, they make a big noise. The, the idea of friendship um, uh, within, within herds, it's not just a pecking order. Uh, animals have emotions, and this idea that 
uh, we can just uh, uh, enjoy uh, the act of killing uh, uh, and 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 give it a the, the title of blood sport. I, uh, I I find quite obnoxious, really, and uh, and it covers all of forms of of of, of, of blood sport. Um, in this particular uh, motion grew out of the, the whole hunting thing. I mean, my sisters used to go hunting and they got blooded with the tail of a fox. That was 40 years ago, if not longer. Um, uh, we've moved on th since then. And, uh, and I, although the Hunting Act has been around for an awful long time, the culture that surrounds hunting persists. And, it, and that is a big problem, I think. Uh, it, it's, uh, it's not helping... Uh, the education required as to how we should be treating animals in the future. So I think we should do all we can to, to change that culture and not really allow any kind of hunting, uh, as far as we can within the law, um, on council land to send a message to, um, uh, to, to those that still persist in, in, this, in this, um, uh, this practice. Um, and so I look for your support, and uh, I hope you take due regard to my mental health with, um, in <laughs> considering your response, given the health and safety that we've just discussed. Thank you, Councillor McKay. Uh, do you wish to speak now? Yes, thank you. Um, a bit worried about what John was doing to those poor chickens, actually. You know? But um, aside, aside from that. Um, yes, um, as Councillor McKay said, um, this arose from um, being myself and Councillor Jackson being asked um, for our thoughts on the um, traditional Boxing Day hunt meet at um, the key car park in Kingsbridge, which of course is owned by the Southampton Council. And we, we had some thoughts, uh, we weren't uh, massively keen that it should go ahead, but we weren't able to um, have, any, have any influence on that because there was nothing in place um, in the Council uh, rules and regulations. So hence, I, I was talking to Councillor McKay um, about that, and he very kindly drafted the um, motion. Is much better at that sort of much better at that sort of thing than I am. Um, and mine would not have complied with anything at all. <laughs> I'm sure. Um, so um, it, it sort of. I'm not having a go at any particular hunt. Um, I must hasten to say before I carry on, um, but. As you may know, the hunting bill became law in back in 2004 or so, 20 years ago now. Um, but it, it had a perceived loophole, um, which is trail hunting, which, as you may know, is um, where um, uh, fox, if hounds follow a scent trail which uh, uses fox urine. Um, and it's often laid down where, where foxes <coughs> are, are likely to be. Um, there's, you know, you can see where this is likely to be, to be going. Um, the accusation is that at trail hunting can be used as a smoke screen um, for chasing and killing foxes, um, thereby a loophole in the law. Um, this has been recorded by hunt saboteurs and, and monitoring groups, um, or it could happen unintentionally. You know, if, if uh, hounds have got the scent of fox urine, you can imagine um, they're not going to make too fine a distinction between that and the actual animal, or perhaps any other animal in their in their path. Um, there are also concerns, as it says in the, in, the, in the motion, to do it says public nuisance considerations, and that would be to do with concerns about public safety. I mean, the hounds may be um, in a particular area, uh, council land or otherwise, but they're, you know, what's going to happen? What could happen? Uh, they could cross a road. Um, there could be some sort of accident. There are risks there. They could cross farmland, private properties. And, um, you know, one does hear of instances where they do do this. And pets have been frightened, injured, killed. Sheep, farmers' sheep have been worried. Um, so there is that downside as well. I mean, trail hunting is already banned on land owned by the National Trust. Um, and I saw there was a Channel 4 News um, item recently, you may have seen, where England's most senior police officer dealing with illegal hunting activity is actually a Devon and Cornwall police um, officer, Chief Superintendent Matt Longman, based in Plymouth. And he said that the current law on fox hunting is unworkable and it's allowing trail hunts to be used as a front <coughs> for illegal activity. Um, uh, Plymouth MP Luke Pollard has called for um, the loopholes to be closed. And in fact, and I'm not 
doing a party political broadcast on the Labour Party, but um, just interesting, Lab Labour's Shadow Environment Secretary, um, Steve Reid, said um, this sort of hunting would be banned in the first term of a Labour government. I mean, you know, there may or may not be a, a Labour government this year. Um, he said, people have seen images of packs of hounds getting into back gardens, killing cats, ripping flocks apart. There's not a majority in any part of the country that wants to see that continue. We will close those loopholes. So you may, may int be interested to hear that. Um, and also another statistic is that 85% of people in polls say that they are opposed to repealing fox hunting ban. Um, so it perhaps does show the strength of feeling that I think is rising. It used to be traditionally thought, you know, like the Countryside Alliance represented people in the country and they're pro-fox hunting. I don't think it's quite as simple as that anymore. I think there's quite a sort of perhaps a silent uh, group of people in the countryside who are not happy about it, but perhaps don't want to raise their heads above the parapet and say so. Um, but, you know, that's for others to, to, to say, or, or that's for that to be debated. Uh, but those are my feelings about it, and um, I'd be interested to hear what other people have to say. Thank you. Thank you. Councillor Dennis. Thank you. Um, just so I can make an informed decision on this, I'd just be interested to understand um, a little more detail about how the how this will be enforced, really. So, um, first, just a series of questions. First one, when you say organisations supporting such sports, how far are we, what's the breadth of that? Can you give some examples of, you know, how far you would take that, the parameters of that? Um, second question is about animal traps. So I would just be interested to know how the, if the district council currently uses animal traps, um, you know, in particular relation to moles or rats and things like that, and what the implications might be there. Uh, and the third question is the mechanism um, for refusing that permission. So it's changed from in the opinion of the executive to the council. So every time someone writes for permission, will that come to full council? If I could just have some clarity on those three points, that'd be helpful. Thank you. Thank you. Um, I'm guessing that uh, Councillor McKay is going to answer this, but perhaps you'd like to address that in your in your summing up before the vote. Do you think? Anybody else wish to speak, please? Yes, Councillor Hodgson. Thank you. Um, I welcome this. I welcome it very much. I actually put forward a similar um, proposal probably about I don't know ten years ago. <laughs> and what was interesting at the time. Um, there was a massive walkout of this council because they were asked to leave because they were farmers and had a vested interest. So I'm assuming in this decision now we don't have any farmers using animal traps or running around with guns or on horses shooting at things. Um, I've got a couple of amendments if I just may suggest them and see what you think. All it's doing is tightening it up a little bit actually. So number one, I can't send it to you Daryl because I haven't got this text. This is the trouble with our system we can't actually get hold of the text and just fiddle with it separately so i've put some boxes on mine so it says it does not support the killing of or cruelty to animals or wildlife for sport or leisure in any circumstances <coughs> because often other wildlife is affected by some of these practices as well it might not be obvious but it, you know something blasting through a, a hedge can have quite a big impact you prepare to accept that that's number you? one so we take these just, ones for time. Just repeat that, sorry. Cruelty that okay? to, yeah, killing, killing of or cruelty to animals or wildlife. Uh, uh, isn't wildlife animals, all animals? Well, there's other elements around, there's, you know, there's the whole thing that ha gets damaged. <laughs> well, birds, birds are animals, they're part of the animal kingdom. But it's... I think it, it sounds narrow, and it's like it, I think it's like trying to make it a, a, a wild. It kind of covers more, yeah. maybe it covers all bases. It kind of, well, it shows it's, it's <laughs> happening in the wild. In it, well, it, it shows that it's happening in, in the in natural areas rather than it just being on farms or or specific bits of land. Uh, Councillor McKay, are you have any thoughts um, on that? I, d I sort of think we're dancing on the head of a pin here a bit. I mean, it, uh, the original wording I, I think is is clear enough that. Um, I'm not quite sure what this brings to it, but well, I mean, I'm, if, if uh, yeah, a lot of these, a lot of these social sports leave a lot of injured animals. 
and that's where cruelty kicks in. So it's, it might not be a quick death, but it's okay. a slow one. Okay, I can accept the cruelty, but I'm not sure about all wildlife. Okay, in well, the end, yeah, throw yeah. that out if you want. But I mean, you know, it's... it's up to you. Um, point two I wanted to sort of slightly... So, so, so let's be clear on that. Um, are you happy to withdraw the wildlife? Yeah, yeah, go on yeah. then. That's what let's other withdraw the wildlife. Well. Thank okay. you. Um, so, and, and Councillor Hadcan, you're happy to accept that? Thank you. Thank you, yeah. Point two, I just slightly modified, made a couple of modifications. I didn't put, does not, sounds like we do, don't do it already, but I put will not facilitate or promote cruelty or the killing of animals for sports or leisure by not allowing its land <laughs> to be used for such sports or activities or used by organisations supporting such sports. Because if we didn't have not in there, it sounds like we're actually not doing that, but we are. You've got the double negative. It's a double right? negative. No, you don't need that. I think is it because we'll not facilitate by not allowing it. It's a double yes, negative. Yes, double negative. Yes. Grammatically, it's not. Yes. I know, but it's so. <laughs> <laughs> I know, it's just the way it sounds. All the grammar, all the grammar, I know, I know, I know, it's a yeah. double negative. You're in my province. You're in my province now, Counts. <laughs> um, I'll just say maybe the promotion, the facilitation or promotion of the killing of animals for sport will not be allowed on its land. Then you've got one straight negative. Anyway, mm. and my final point was um, well, on. We'll come back to that in a moment. This is here, the last one. So number three is uh, to just add, add at the end of that whole piece, just add cruelty or suffering. So it's cru so it's an avoidable cruelty or suffering. Okay. Yeah. I mean, um, again, I don't. Um, you, I, you, I can't really do the okay. way, really. I so mean, maybe take that second knot out then, if you, if, if you know. I think, I think there is, yeah. I yeah. think there's a general feeling that uh, it's not entirely. You, you, you've muddied it rather than made it clearer. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. You're happy, those two amendments you're happy to, or well, two and, three, and a half, three. <laughs> three. <laughs> yeah. yeah, and Councillor uh, Cannon, you're happy with those. Um, sorry, who does? Councillor, um, do you wish to say anything further, Councillor? Yeah, because I just think it's, it's a wider thing than just killing. As much as killing is terrible, there's a lot of people who just go out sh happily Coffee, shooting, yeah. don't necessarily take a dog to go and pick up the, the birds that fall from the yeah. sky, yeah. and you just get that long suffering. And it's and it's about yeah. cruelty as well, Sim similar to, unfortunately, Councillor McKay was describing, you know, behaviour yeah. sometimes of youngsters who aren't perhaps watch to stop them, you know, sort of start happily standing there counting off the legs on a spider as they pull it off and things like this, horrible stuff. But a lot of kids, you know, don't think anything about it. And it's, I think it's just maybe strengthening up those points, really. Yeah. Before we go further, I think I ought to make it clear, and perhaps the Chief Exec will correct me if I've said anything wrong, but we are debating whether we should allow this activity on our land. We are not debating whether blood sports are... We support or not do not support blood sports on other people's land. We can only decide what happens on our land, and as the legal officer has pointed out, we have to do that um, with regard to the, the the benefit of the public, and we have to be very clear that what the benefit of the public is, which I am I understand is that um, to avoid incidents on our land where dogs may run out of control or where horses may. Um, uh, career away uh, and, and a danger to the public. I think we have to be very clear about that. Is that correct, Mr. Bowen? Chairman, it's, we have to say that the context of these um, statements is that it's for the benefit or not, between where you, you vote, of the council's area, um, the land in the council's area, and the stuff about the permission um, about animal traps and stuff, that's, we can only do that with regards to our own land. We can't mandate anybody else's land in that particular one at number three. Yeah, I, I, I raise that because I haven't seen many people Country. shooting pheasants yeah. on our car in our car parks recently. Well, and I, th I think we need to be very focused on what the purpose of this is. <laughs> thank you. So we're moving on, Councillor Bonham. Yeah, thank you, Chair. I guess um, I'm a bit confused by this. I can't disagree with any of the words in that statement or notice. What I'm struggling with is how this might affect hunting in Kingsbridge, because surely the hunt would say that it's not 
convening for the purposes of killing or cruelty to animals for sport or leisure. And in fact, I think if it said it was doing that, it will be against the law. So I'm, then we go to the hunt and say, please stop. And they might say, well, on what basis? Because we're not facilitating, or they would claim, perhaps they're not facilitating or promoting the killing of animals for sport or leisure. So while I can't disagree with this, I'm struggling to see how it would meet the objectives set out by Councillor Callaghan, which, again, I'm not saying I agree with or don't, but it's just a, a question. Thank you, Chairman. It's, we would give permission or not to use the land. It wouldn't be a question of assessing the relative merits of their arguments. It would say, do you want to use our land? Then we can say yes or no in that instance. On what basis? On the basis that we think that they're perhaps promoting, I mean, surely they're going to object, appeal and raise a concern. I, I, I just, if we're allowed to do that, it seems rather arbitrary to I, me. I think we have control over who uses our land. I'll refer to Mrs. Byrne. Yes, we do. And we would, we would, if this goes through, we would then need to think about, a, a, you know, some pr a protocol that dealt with all of those issues that we, just, we wouldn't want to be drafting on the hoof in the middle of a council meeting. It's the, it's the it's sentiment you're voting for or against. You could leave us to worry about the details. Thank you. Um, Councillor Oram, I think. Did you know, uh, Councillor Rake. Thank you, Chair. Two things. One very trivial, which is can we remove the therefore in the, the third word? It seemed, I think that's just a hangover from an earlier draft um, referring to there was a preamble that uh, um, hopefully um, Councillor McKay will accept that one without expressing his lack of enthusiasm for the change um, and that and I do I do struggle with um, uh, item two as it stands and I think this relates to a, a question asked by Councillor Dennis and not answered the or used by organizations supporting such sports um, I, I feels to me as if there's a freedom of speech issue there if you had a political party say that was arguing that uh, the uh, hunting ban should be overthrown, um, they would qualify as an organisation supporting such sports, but if they wanted to uh, stand and hand out their leaflets in a car park, I would support their right to do so. Um, so I've, I feel that that line two might be a little too widely drawn. I, I completely agree with the um, thrust of the motion. Um, but um, I, I do have qualms about um, that, that last section of, of the second point. Yes. Sorry, just Sorry. A, a point of order. Could you clarify at this point whether we're talking to the substantive or whether we're talking to the amendment? Because at this point, I'm not entirely okay. sure. We are on talking. the substantive motion because up to now, the proposer and seconder have accepted these amendments. So that they're not amendments being moved as such. We are talking to the motion. If um, Councillor Rake's point is up to <sighs> Councillor McKay to decide whether he wishes to accept that, or if not, in which case, Councillor Rake, you would need to move an amendment. But at the moment, we're discussing the substantive motion as amended and accepted. So, Councillor so, so McKay, do you... In fact, it's already gone, so, yeah, the, the word therefore. Accepted You've accepted it? Yeah. Okay, thank you. So, uh, Councillor Thomas? Chairman, oh, sorry, sorry Councillor Hancock was first. Right. Sorry, I've got Han Hancock Thomas. Sorry, Thank Councillor you. Hancock first, sorry. Thank you, Chair. Um, if members would indulge me, I'll tell a story. Um, a few months ago, it's, 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 it's not about kittens, no. Okay. <laughs> um, a few months ago, um, one morning, there was a commotion down the lane where we live. Um, and a few seconds later, a pack of dogs ran past the front of my house, around into the field next door, um, where horses kept, um, all around into the farm adjoining that. Um, all over the place, the farm next door has Dobermans. Um, luckily, they were inside. Luckily, my gate was closed. My children, all three children under eight years old, were not in the garden and were not 
outside of my gate because I hate to think what might have happened to them if a pack of dogs out of control were um, to come across them. So I'm very happy to support this motion and I think if hunting like this and an incident were to happen where it is left from council land, I think that would be reprehensible of the council to have allowed it to go place. So I'm very happy that this is here. Thank you, Councillor Hancock. Councillor Thomas. <coughs> Thank you, Chairman. It, it seems to me that one of the reasons for this motion is it being brought is the fact that currently we have no ability to restrict what happens on our land. And that's the point. So, so, so what was witnessed, which has brought about this motion, was the fact that we may or may not have wanted to do something about it, but we couldn't. So the natural follow-on from that would seem to be that if it's the will of the, of, of, of the council to endorse this motion, we almost need to have a commitment in here that says that the next step would be that, that this would go perhaps to overview and scrutiny, to a task and finish, who could then work on the protocols behind how we would actively answer the sort of questions that Councillor Dennis has asked and also the reservations that, that Councillor Rake has made, because we would then have a, a series of protocols that would, aren't, that would be able to decide rationally whether or not an organisation would fall foul of number two or not. And, and we could do that, presumably, once we've got that protocol in place, we could do it on a case-by-case -case basis. So it might be a sensible idea to amend the motion with, with something after point four that states that that would be your intention, Councillor McKay, that it would go... To, to a task and finish of ONS to set those parameters and protocols. I don't know if that helps, Chairman. No, I mean, I, I absolutely accept that there, there, there are some grey areas in this that, that need further, further sort of um, uh, examination and, and, and thought. So, yeah, that, that would be a perfectly uh, uh, good way of dealing with that and would answer some of the concerns that people have got. Can we give Mr White time to... Uh find the, the right words to add in there. So my drafting of, uh, of motions is not as good as you think, uh, Councillor. <laughs> Councillor Hasbro, have you got a question? Because we, you've already spoken. No, I was spoken. just going to say, yeah, should we actually be asking to look, to develop a policy? Is it, oh, it's a protocol, is it? Would it be a policy that we would have on this? Yeah, okay, yeah. Councillor Nick, Nick's next. Yeah. <laughs> Let's just say that if you can. <laughs> Thank you, Chair. Um, as the Chair was saying, I don't think point one makes it clear that it's, it's on council land. It says, does not support the killing or cruelty. And uh, as he said, we're only... Obviously, we're looking at the whole, everything together, but this motion is specifically on council land, so I don't know if that needs to be changed in point one. There's the preamble, Chairman, that says the council resolved, notwithstanding the moral arguments about blood spot, blah, 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 it's for the benefit or improvement of the council's area that the council then does one, two, three, four. Yeah. I think so that, it, I think it, that it, it does covers all cover the that points point. underneath. Yeah. Okay, thank you. Uh, Councillor... Well, I think next. Oh, no, okay. The risk of being really unpopular. Um, I don't think anybody was intending on shooting sentient cows as a sport, but there are needs for dealing with foxes. I've seen three lots of hens destroyed in a matter of minutes because a fox got in. I'm also uh, aware that deer and wild boar cause uh, large amounts of damage. So I'm not saying that I just, uh, I'm not, I'm just pointing out that there is a counter argument or a counter to some of the discussions that we've had. And yes, I think it is important that the protocols are in place to be able to explain what is and what is not covered by this. So I'm not going to abstain on this because I feel that we're, it's so one-sided that I feel that there's a voice needed for those that have a reason to actually undertake um, culling in the right way, and I don't want that to be captured. So I'm going to abstain just on point 
because I really do believe that there are going to be situations where you do need to sensibly find a way to, find, uh, to, to solve a, uh, uh, an animal welfare problem in this context. So I'm going to abstain just because of the, I want to make a point. Councillor Oram. Thank you, Chairman. Uh, Councillor Yarder makes a, a very good point, and there should be room where you know, population control, where it is relevant, um, can be brought forward to the Council. But I'd like to say to Councillor Yardy, I think that is going to be covered, probably, in um, overview and scrutiny as a part of that protocol slash policy, so that we build those parameters around that particular issue. So we can still vote on the substantive and agree with it, but then that we can come back to, to that particular point in overview and scrutiny at a later date. Um, and I, I would just like to gently say to members that the, the, the actual debate on um, fox hunting is, is over. It was over 20 years ago. You know, what we're talking about now is the, the specifics on how we're able to control what happens on our land as council land. Um, before we go on, I, my eyes are not what they were. Mr White, could you read the last added um, amendment because I, I want to be clear in my mind where we go when, if, this is, if this is carried. Thank you, Chair. So as it stands at the moment, it's a suggestion of Councillor Thomas which hasn't been accepted by the original proposal seconder, so it's therefore showing in red. But it's bullet, a new bullet point five, so under the auspices of that, the Council then five asks its overview scrutiny committee to consider setting up a task and finish group to develop a protocol slash policy to underpin parts one and four, or one, two, four, actually, of this motion. From what Councillor McKay said earlier, I think we would be content. Yeah, right, right. no, Both proposer and seconder are. Content. So that will therefore be a plug substantive motion. Part thank you, Chair. Substantive motion. Thank you. Uh, Councillor Cooper. Uh, thank you, Chair. Um, just coming back on what Councillor Yardy said. Um, I think the motion is very clear. This is about blood sports and killing animals for leisure. It's nothing to do about culling or controlling animals, which uh, might impact on chickens or anything else. I don't see anybody else wishing to speak. Yes. Oh, yes. Sorry. There's my, oh, right. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you very much. Um, I, I would like to say I don't support nor I've ever killed animals for sport or leisure. Um, and I totally support the sentiment behind this motion. I'm not quite sure which motion we're on, but yeah, I, I do support it. Um, okay, good, all right. Um, I, I think I want to come back to the, the, the line where all used by organisations supporting such sports. That really concerns me because I don't know how, I don't know whether that's something that would be considered an over and scrutiny, but the fact that it's there, it makes me feel like there's a bit of an overreach there. I mean, I don't know about young farmers, some other organisations that they might be in a car park hanging out together, whether they might be banned from there because they might be involved in sort of leisure sport. It just, it, that, that really concerns me, that, that sentence there. I mean, I, 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 I sorry, am I, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, uh, I accept that concern, and, uh, but uh, as it is going to go to over, overview and scrutiny, then th these are the sort of uh, gray areas that was referring to that would hopefully get, um, uh, proper examination and we'll come up with a, a protocol that is okay for everybody. I was going to say, I, no, does sorry. associated activities cover it or, or not? Um, instead of after saying such <coughs> sports <coughs> or associated ac <coughs> acti um, activities, that might cover it or it might not be seen to be covering it? would take out the organisations, which would mean that organisations <laughs> whose primary purpose is, is, is another activity wouldn't be caught by this and stop, as you say, young farmers having a, a meeting in a car park or whatever. I, would you yeah. be happy with that? So we take out the organisations, and take out the organisations, yeah, okay. <laughs> yeah, I, but it, I think taking out the organisation does make a, a it does make it more uh, clear what the aim of this is, and it's not wishing to deprive people of freedom of speech. Yeah. Uh, do we have anybody else wishing to speak? <laughs> oh, sorry. Yes, Council Domit. Um, it has been raised already, but I was confused by the answer. So the group that meet in Kingsbridge. Aren't they following a scent and not an animal? Yeah. 
So would this be able to... Right, so if they are hunting a scent or following a scent, they're not killing or being cruel to animals. So would we be able to use this to stop that? I was, I was just going to respond to that. It's well documented that um, trail hunting often leads to the killing of animals because it's quite hard to stop a dog who's following the scent of a fox when he actually meets a fox. It's, it's a, as Councillor McKay said, it's often a smoke screen. So this would stop that as well because it's, it's being linked. I don't know, actually maybe that's a question for a legal mind, whether it, you, trail hunting can be written in separately that we don't support trail hunting either. Because that's actually you're right. That's not clear. Maybe maybe we need to have that as a separate well, point. Some yeah. of these I think will be yeah dealt with when we move move this on. Sorry, did you wish to speak? Uh, yes, well, I guess just on that point, maybe associated activities could include trail hunting or that specific wording or associated activities such as trail hunting. But again, maybe that could come up in the interview discreet. I think we're drawing to a conclusion on this, so I call on Councillor McKay. If you could address any of the points that you can recall that have been raised here. Yeah, I can remember them all. Thank you. Um, <laughs> um, Refresher on any of <laughs> the. No. I, I just want to um, uh, this business of, of, of culling. Can I can I just say in the in the preamble? And it's a shame that the preamble isn't actually sort of visible on the screen, but. Uh, to the actual motion, it, it, as, there is a the last paragraph. It says it is often argued that blood sports are part of the management of the countryside. That is rarely the reality, but where such management is required, it needs to be carried out by trained specialists who have proper regard to an animal's welfare and rights under the legislation. So I'm fully aware of the problem of 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 uh, uh, where where you've got deers. They they can cause a lot of wild boar. Absolutely. Uh, and populations do need to be controlled occasionally, um, uh, but they need to be done humanely and by people who know uh, what they're doing. Um, and, you know, uh, a lot of commercial shoots um, it, uh, are not remotely um, uh, resulting in, in, in animal welfare considerations. Um, it, it is a blood sport. And um, and this is not about that. This is, this is entirely, this, this motion is entirely about blood sports. Um, and with regard to uh, 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 whether you'd be able to um, use this where you're just doing trail hunting, uh, as I said in, the, in my sort of preamble to all of this, was the, um, it is about the culture of hunting. And I, where, and I think it, this is a real problem and, and this is something that we need to address as part of uh, our responsibilities with, uh, as being a landowner, that... Uh, uh, where you've got that culture being uh, being um, promulgated through trail hunting, et cetera, et cetera, this is a real problem which we need to address. And so uh, I think that although the words may need to be um, massaged a bit in order to capture that, what was the intention was this facilitating or promoting the killing of animals. Uh, this is exactly what's happening with trail hunting in the end, even if Sometimes, even as a result of just trail hunting, you often get um, uh, uh, animals getting killed anyway. So, um, so I, I mean, I hope that the although I recognise the imperfection of this 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 motion as it is now um, resolved that it will go to overview and scrutiny, that you can support it, and that we can then take it from there. And so, that at least the at least the conversation has been started, and, and protocol will emerge. Thank you. Um, we concluded the debate. I just want to ask uh, the Chief Executive, with the addition of that last paragraph, does, I presume this means none of this will be implemented until that protocol has been discussed at overview and scrutiny, and will that then come back to full council for ratification? Well, I, th I think that's... Thank you, Chairman. I, I think the point is that there are uh, differing views about some of these issues. The, the main thrust of the motion, I think, is absolutely clear, but a number of... Uh, councillors have made the point that there is 
need for some clarification. Clearly, that is the intent of sending it to OVU and Scrutiny to do just that. Uh, I think it is important we are really clear about what this does and doesn't cover. So I think that uh, it's important that when OVU and Scrutiny does its work, that members who wish to uh, be involved in that debate are encouraged to do so. Um, that we clarify exactly what the protocol does and does not cover. And then we, if, if the wish of uh, ONS is to bring it back here, then I think that would be helpful. But I think there's a, there'll be an opportunity for members to speak at ONS if they wish. But I think given the nature of this, uh, we should spend a little bit of time to get it absolutely right. That would be my, would be my advice. Thank you, Chairman. Thank you. I think that's important. Um, so I intend to move to the vote now. So um, we have the proposal as amended in several places. Um, hopefully everybody's clear now what it is we're voting on. So I would ask all those in favour of the motion to please show. That's 18 in favour. Thank you, Chair. Those against? Abstentions. None against? Abstentions. The maths adds up. Nine abstentions. Thank you, Chair. So that motion is carried and will now go to overview and scrutiny to, to be polished. Thank you very much. Um, so now we're going on to an item uh, into part two. So we do need to move the exclusion of the public and press for that. Um, on the yeah, wording on the screen, if I can read it. Sure. Sorry. Yes, yeah, sorry. Yeah. Oh, I, I've got to pass the resolution first. Yeah. Uh, we've had a proposer and seconder, um, and the reason is that it's possible that in the, or it's likely that uh, disclosure of information will be against the public interest. Um, can I have a show of hands for all those in favour of moving into part two? That's clearly carried.